Hello everybody, James here, and it's story time with Dutch Mantel, episode 82, and good news. The Dutchman is back! Here he is! <laughs> well, uh, i got to say, James, it's, it's good to be back, and I'll tell the story of what happened to me in, in a minute, because it's a weird story. But it's called story time for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into it. But let me ask you, James, did you miss me? Terribly. Terribly. <laughs> I did miss you. Yeah. I was I was I was away for a couple of weeks. I was messaging you back and forth and uh just keeping updates on you, keeping tabs on you and stuff. And uh I was just before I didn't realise how excited I was gonna get when I just introduced you there. I surprised myself how much I yelled. And when I say we got thousands of messages we got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of messages of well wishes and hope you're doing okay and can't wait till you're back and all that kind of thing and i can i can show you them for like i did three videos of updates on the podcast and essentially i gave no new information that you hadn't given publicly and just those three videos, we've probably got about 3,000, 4,000 comments, all positive, all well wishes from there. Then every video we posted in the month that you were in hospital and I was away, every comment almost is, Dutch, get better. You know, we miss you. We want you back and everything like that. So, I mean, when I say thousands, thousands. So that's got to be nice to hear. Well, no, I, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, so the main question I get uh, was what happened. And it's hard to describe what happened because I was sitting at home and my birthday was on November the 29th. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. And I, I, I couldn't stay awake. And I kept like just nodding off, just going out. And my daughter, Amanda, and thanks to hers, one of the reasons I'm still here, uh, she said, are you okay? And she said, I kept giving her gibberish answers, which made no sense. And she was looking at me funny. And, and this continued for like an hour or two. And uh, finally she said, there's something wrong. And she called 911 and they came and picked me up. And I don't even remember that. And I was just talking to, to you, James, right before we went on the air. People didn't hear this, but I said there's bits and pieces of this whole 26-day affair that I have no recollection of. Nothing. My daughter would tell me we'd be sitting in a hospital, and she'd say, you remember this? And I said, what? Yeah, when you ran out of the room and did this and that. And I said, no, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, you did yeah, you did. I said, no, I couldn't have done that. But it was the things I just do not remember doing. I don't recall. And But I had a, an illness that's similar to our, it, it is septis. Septis. Sepsis. Sepsis. Yeah. So, I mean, so how did you, we'll, we'll go back to the beginning then. So, so what caused the initial infection then? Was, so is it just a fever or? I don't know. They don't know. I don't think. <laughs> it, it was, it's, it's a fa infection that gets in the blood, I think. Mm -hmm. And it can spread to all your organs and it is lethal. It can kill you. Then I found out later, not only did I have sepsis, but I had E. coli, too, on top of that. So now I'm battling oh, E. coli. I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a note here from the other room, my daughter Amanda. The E. coli, I must have had E. coli first, and it called, caused the sepsis. Anyway... Let me highly advise not getting any one of these viruses or germs or whatever it is because it will knock you down to your knees and sometimes and if it had if I hadn't gone to the hospital 
I would have, I, I, I wouldn't have made it. But the thing is, when I went to the hospital, I, I didn't even, I remembered, I remember bits and pieces of that. But nothing was serious to me because I was laughing and I was kidding. And I don't remember hurting, but I had a fever. And I remember them around me and it was like in, in consciousness and out of consciousness. What was, or what that, was the I, fever? that I remember. How high was the fever? If you know that. It never really went that high, but it's like 103, I think, I guess. See, they didn't tell me a lot, or they may have told me everything that I don't remember. I mean, they could have stood right in front of me, and they say, well, uh, Mr. Cowan, uh, you this, this, and this, and this. And I just look at them, and I say, well, what time's the food? Or some stupid. But, and I, I'm thinking, and people, after, after it got going a little bit, and I got back to, Myself, after about the 10th day in, uh, I started reading up on it on it because I had my, my trusty phone and Google. So I started looking it up. Hell, I scared myself reading about it. Because if not attended to immediately, not two days later, three days later, four, if not attended to within the first 24 hours, you'll be dead in 72. So it spreads that fast. And of course, in reading, I started reading about other things, like if one organ shuts down, the next organ is going to follow soon because they have all this message system. I'm gone, guys. I'm checking out. I'm checking. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Pretty soon, there's no organs left to keep you alive, and you're you're just dead. So, but I do thank the fans for giving a crap about me, and I did entertain myself. I didn't get thousands of messages; I got hundreds, and I really appreciate that. Uh, but and the way it came on, it came on suddenly. It came on fast. And I'm thinking, you know, sometimes life has its own way of giving you curveballs. See if you can hit this. And I, I, I dodged the bullet on this one. And uh, hopefully I can hang in here a while and keep doing this show. I did miss the show. And I wondered how you were making it without me. But then later on, I remember that all we did we had done some pre-taped shows just for December. And uh, it's funny. I went in on the 28th of November. My birthday was on the 29th of November. So I spent my birthday laying flat on my back in a hospital, which is not fun. And they put me in one place for a while. And it was like, it was like a jail. I, I, I was actually looking for a way to kind of break out in my hysteria, in my uh, ramblings, in my in my head. But no, it's locked down. You cannot get out. And then after about seven or eight days in there, they did move me to a to a, I guess a, I wasn't in intensive care, but I I had a room by myself and nobody bothered me. Just the nurses and the doctors came in and nobody else. I mean, my daughter Amanda could get in there, but and that's it. So, but strange case never happened to me before. I don't want it to happen again. I don't want it to happen to anybody else. But I survived it. And I guess that's that's the thing that counts. When we recorded before, um, so what day was Thanksgiving? So in the twenty second or twenty third or something like that. And when we recorded twenty twenty seventh. Would have been no, the twenty seventh. Is it? Do you know what it may well have been then, wouldn't it? How do you work out Thanksgiving? Is it the last Thursday of November? I guess. I think. So. And then, then the twenty eighth is when I went to hospital. 
because I remember we tried to record on the 27th, and I hadn't realised it's Thanksgiving, because obviously we don't celebrate it here or anywhere else apart from the United States. And I could... I'll put it bluntly, it's the worst show we ever recorded, and I stopped it after 20 minutes because there was clattering around, you know, people making food around you, everyone was talking, and we just thought, eh, it's just not working. And so we thought, well, let's just put it off until the next day. And then the next day, I remember sitting around waiting for you to come on, and then you never came on, and then you sent me a big message uh, afterwards, basically saying you're in the hospital and things were... I, and I could tell something was I, I could tell something was off with you on the twenty seventh, and then mm-hmm. on the twenty eighth, it all became. I remember telling you this, and you probably won't remember this, is that I actually stayed up on uh, the day we tried to, on Thanksgiving evening your time. I couldn't sleep for like a couple of hours because I thought something's happened to Dutch, and I had this weird premonition when you when you messaged me afterwards that uh, the, the next day when we were due to record on the Friday. And you didn't reply, and I just went. I know something's happened to Dutch, which sounds so weird to say, but I could, I clearly could tell from you on Thursday, on the twenty seventh or twenty eighth, whatever day, twenty seventh or whatever day we've agreed it was, that something that something wasn't right. And well, I, something wasn't right. So yeah, I just I didn't know what it was. You didn't either. Nobody knew. Well, I'd sort of attributed it that you just really distracted, but then something told me no there's something there's something else because i could uh, i could tell you were sort of like in an autopilot mode answering certain things and you're you're very intuitive james certainly am i mean you can look deep into the soul of a person and tell yeah. hey i can make up any <laughs> old bullshit and say in retrospect you know what um that kind of thing uh, <laughs> i've i've got i've got quite a few questions basically i've amalgamated because you asked me to ask the fans uh, you know, sending your questions about this health event, as it were, and essentially they're all pretty much what I've written here. Uh, what was the treatment that you were given to get over it? That's just, I was given medicine every three hours. And this is what I don't remember. I was giving a blood transfusion. Mm. I said, a what? They said, a, and I do not remember that. I don't know if you remember transfusions or not. I don't know. They said they gave me a blood transfusion. So it, it, was, it had to be serious. And they did give me, I think I remember, it said I had a 50-50 chance. I think, don't mark me down on that being the truth. I could have just imagined that. No, that's what you told me. But that's what you told me. They gave 50, you 50, 50, yeah. And I didn't much like those odds, but there's nothing I could do about them. So, but I do think the hospital, I mean, they, they gave me good care, expensive as hell, <laughs> but, but they, but they kept me alive. But when somebody looks at you and you say, you know, Mr. Cowan, you, we're going to be honest with you. You have a 50-50 chance of surviving this. And they didn't tell me sepsis then because I would have freaked out because I would have recognized the word. I know it's not good. And when if they said E. coli, I would have jumped out the window. Hmm. Oh, my God. But the thing that counts right now is I'm still here. And guess what, James? While I was gone... The wrestling business didn't die. See, it just kept going, kept clicking, kept cl- clicking. And, I, and I'll be very honest now. If, if if I missed about a month of programming, because you know how much I cared about wrestling when I was laying there? It about that. So I missed it all. So all this is as new to me as it will be to the fans. So... Continue the show, Mister in- Intuitive. Yeah, I I will do. Hey, I, how do I feel? Hey, okay. In your heart of hearts, mm-hmm. how are you feeling me right now? Am I okay now? You think? You're yeah. You're, you're about where you should be. Okay, good. Good. I uh, there's a couple more questions before we move on. As you say, <laughs> when we were told, you, you know, fifty fifty, sort of like surviving it. Uh, I think you went to a rehab facility afterwards. 
the hospital stay after a couple of weeks. So what's the difference between the hospital and the rehab facility then for you? Well, at the hospital, they kept the door closed always. <laughs> the door was always closed. And a couple of nurses would come in at our doctor. But in the other place, the door was open and people could, you know, walk the walk the hallways. It was a I guess I got sent to a, a rehab facility, is what it is. And and people were they were all getting better like I was. So you could go out in the hallway or you could go out and outside. You know, you could find your way out there. But this place was huge, huge, huge place. And I never thought they had places that huge for that. But they do. Hanging around. What would you say? My daughter was saying it was tiny. Not that I recall. Hey, you just do your work in there and I'll do my work in here, okay? <laughs> just... And don't let them cross over. No, I, I like how you've got live auto correct. Uh, do I? As well. Yeah, it also sounds like it's like a halfway home for the, the Maybe. medically insane, unencumbered. Yes, the medically insane as well, of course. And uh, that was that was. I didn't really notice a, a, a difference in 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 the care that much. It was just they would come in and check on you, and they'd take your vitals every three hours, blood pressure heart rate and all that and temperature. And they would take that every three hours, write it down. But it was after a while, my, my temperature actually settled down to about 97, six. Every time they check it, it was like 97, six and the blood pressure was because they'd be giving me blood pressure medicine, which I should be taking anyway. And now when I left, they gave me this big thing of, of medicine to take, and it lists on it, Monday, take this, and a little box that you open up so I, I don't get it confused, and I just take that. And I, I can, and I get a month's worth at a time, so I really can't get it confused that much because I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a bad organizer. I cannot organize anything. So unless they give it to me like that, I'm not going to take it. So, and, and part of this illness may have been self-induced because of me just not taking care of myself. So, but I'm here now and I recognize some of the mistakes I made and I'm, I'm hoping that I don't make them again. Uh, well, I was going to ask actually the recidivism if you like that word, uh, the uh, likelihood word. likelihood of of recurrence, do you think is it is there a higher likelihood of you getting E. coli again or sepsis again, or does you just go back to a, a go back to normal and just sort of chalk it down to a, a freak occurrence? No, I think once you've had it, you do have a high percentage maybe of contacting it again. That's why. They preach to me, you have to stay. It, it, it's a, it's a, I'm going to call it a germ, I guess. Bacteria. It, it, get, it gets on your hands and somehow it finds its way into the body and finds its way into the bloodstream. The body is a co complex organism and you just can't understand it by just talking about it. I think doctors understand it. I do not understand it. And I don't even understand what they're telling me. I just understand uh, how I feel. But I'll say right now, I do feel good. And they did a good job. So I thank everybody at Lutz, St. Lutz Hospital in Tampa, Florida, for getting me through this. And if you ever need anything, guys, uh, call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'll probably be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness Any me. Any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll wrap it up as like a many... Uh, the, the way you wrote it on the Facebook post that you did was um, a bunch of intravenous drugs and then some oral. And then I thought, 
Oh crikey, you get some drugs and you get some oral as well. I mean, they must be real. That's that's what private. That's what private. Stop private it, will get James. You these days. Stop it, James. You're too much. No. I don't even know if that's PG. Ah, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, yeah, uh, I read I read that back to myself, and I went, "Wait a minute, all right, that was people were thinking, well, hell, that's not too bad, maybe." <laughs> well, they want to keep you relaxed. They, they did. You know, yeah, they, they, want, they want to give you a reason to keep in the hospital. I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else we can go for apart from, you know, well done for getting through it. As you say, fifty fifty. Well, you know, you, that's rule less odds, the, pretty much. I was on the top side of fifty fifty, so I, I can. I can thank God and the well wishes of people to get me there. Thank you. And as you said, uh, now people are going to have to put up with your bullshit a while longer. So I think <laughs> we will do just that then. So, I don't call, wait a minute, I don't call my stuff bullshit. That is a quote from what you wrote. I know, but <laughs> still, you quoted me on it. So this is highly informed information. Mm from years and years of being around it. 